Greetings, it is I, Tempest Narabon Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue my discussion on the Pathfinder role-playing game system. And what we've been talking about is the various races you can play. Not your standard races, but those unusual races that you might not know a lot about, want to learn about, and see if it would be an option for one of your characters that you're building. Or, if you're DM, NPCs that you're using. Let's dive into the one we're going to talk about today, the Undyne. So the Undyne is a humanoid, of course, as most races are, but they are ones that have an ancestry of the plain water. The thing about an Undyne is when you would look at them, they're pretty obvious that they've got this ancestry. Their skin tends to be hues of blue that matches rivers, lakes, and seas. So they're fairly obvious with this bloodline. And the thing about Undines is they embrace this. They embrace the subtle differences that they have. They see their ancestry as something very important. And the abilities that they get from that ancestry, each individual's abilities as gifts that they've been given from their ancestors. Whether these ancestors are Marids, the water genies, or other things like Mephits, or other elemental type creatures from the plane of water. Regardless though, Undines love to dive into the supernatural aspects of their being. Now, a thing about Undine is they're a quite proud race. They don't tend to show outward fear. This oftentimes is displayed as being very good-natured or playful with others of their own kind, with a little bit more reserved or self-control when it comes to other non-Undine non races. This kind of switch is actually them being able to very easily control their emotions. It almost seems to the outside that they have a kind of uh, switching on a dime when it comes to emotions, that they're a little too extremes, almost erratic, and can seem almost melodramatic to other races, but this isn't true. This erraticness is actually quite powerful control. While it seemed like they might kind of be a moody kind of race, in fact, they don't change these moods without proper provocation. It's just that when things prompt the change, it's right away quick succession of changing from one attitude to another right away. There's nothing in between. If one should become a close friend with an Undyne, you can find that they can be very possessive, and especially of those that they care for, those that they find as friends, which they will do everything in order they can to protect them. Now, Undines, though land dwellers, prefer to settle near water, preferably warmer water. It kind of matches with their connections with the plane of water. Because they like to spend a lot of time in the water, they do tend to wear very little clothes. Just enough clothes that they can cover themselves up while on the land and provide that loose protection when moving into the water. They avoid shoes, they avoid jewelry, because jewelry can interfere with when they're swimming around, and they will tie up their hair if it gets any kind of length to it, just to make sure that when they're swimming around, it doesn't interfere with anything. It's all about ease of that transition from land to water that they can go back and forth very easily. That's why if any Undine picks up martial weapons and basically trains with them, any kind of like melee-based martial skill, they will look to ones that they can be used easily both underwater and above. Now when you look at an Undine, they face, basically look very similar to humans. They have a very similar physical build to a human. The differences are, of course, skin, eye, and hair color first. Their skin, as I said, tends to be shades of water, whether it's kind of more turquoise-like colors for an ocean or dark blues of something like a lake or a river. It can vary. You will find that their hair tends to be a darker version of whatever their skin is. So if their skin's more of a turquoise green, their hair will be a dark green. More blue, darker blue. Their eyes, though, are always the exception. Every Undine has this kind of lipid blue eye that stands out different. Beyond this, Undines just have a couple little things that would stand out. So if you got by the hair color, webbed hands and feet, make it easier to swim, and kind of fin-like ears. So they have these little differences that make them stand out quite well when it compares to humans. But other than that, they look very human, just in their basic form. Now, Undine are actually an exception when it comes to all the elemental races I've talked about, because they see themselves as their own unique race. They, in fact, 
can breed with each other, have offsprings. Though they can interbreed with humans too, and possibly produce Undine ancestries, Undine tend to stick to each other. This is why Undine actually forms small communities. Unlike a lot of the other elemental blooded who very rarely form communities, Undine actually push towards this. So you will find Undine communities either at the water's edge or sometimes even you can find floating cities where they will exist in. Cities is a tough word, they're more floating villages, as they never quite reach very heavy numbers. These communal societies tend to have traditions based upon the overall kind of collective ancestry of the Undine that are settling it, whether they're from certain cultures combined with the kind of culture of their elemental background and kind of find some middle ground of that. They will have this kind of council rule over them that has been chosen from amongst the members. Council members uh, rule for life, though if the community itself gets dissatisfied with them, they can basically force them to resign. Now, intermarriage within the community is quite common, and children are raised communally. This doesn't mean an Undine might seek out a potential mate with a Undine from another community. That can happen. That happens often enough to help keep the bloodlines from getting a little too intermixed, <laughs> though you will tend to have a little bit of that because the communities, again, aren't particularly large. You might have to worry about some of that. Now, the majority of Undine are neutral. They're most concerned about with the welfare of their fellow Undines and of the community that they're building. These two things are what push them. The neutral stance they take, though, does allow them to make trade relations with a large variety of other races, which means that they can survive pretty easily for a very small community. Now, Undine themselves aren't really particularly religious. They do have a strong spiritual connection to the ancestry that they have, though when you come to those that end up in more secular faiths, they will tend to, to worship whatever religion their ancestors did, or venerate some kind of water or ocean deity, that kind of thing, any kind of connections, though community deities also are a possibility. Now, Undine Adventures is a possibility. The fact is that Undines have this urge to move, you know, to, like, the waves themselves that constantly move back and forth, crashing against the shores, they have that urge to move around a lot. Most of these use that to, you know, swim and explore around their community, but there are those that use it to go out adventuring, that urge to travel the worlds, exploring, discovering, learning. That's not the only source of adventuring that an Undine can have. If an Undine proves to be more unscrupulous and gets in trouble with the community, they can be exiled. These exiled Undine will find themselves in a position of having to basically become adventurers to survive. They're no longer connected with the community. Whether this is more of an actual evil crime or just something that they did in a heat of a passion that caused them out, and therefore you could perhaps be of other alignments and be kicked out. It's, it's, it's a storyline you could definitely use for a character. Exiled. The affinities Undine have drive them to things like being druids very easily. A lot of them tend towards that. And there are some sorcerer's bloodline type Undine. Because of their natural sorcerer's bloodline abilities, they favor then, of course, the aquatic bloodline. Now let's talk about the racial traits of an Undine. So an Undine, of course, gets bonuses to dexterity and wisdom, but loses strength. Now an Undine has special movement. Not only can they walk on land, but they can swim. Swim at the same speed they can walk on land, 30 feet. And it is important to note that regardless of the class an Undine takes, swim is always a class skill, and they don't actually have to make swim checks unless special circumstances. I can just swim around. Now they also do have dark vision, 60 feet. They have resistance to cold. As a spell-like ability once per day, they can use hydraulic push. And similar to some of the other elementals, they have a sorcerous bloodline, meaning that their charisma is treated as a little higher when it comes to aquatic bloodlines in sorcerers. This water affinity also can work for clerics, meaning if they're casting things in the water domain or water subtype, they get some bonuses to that too. So if you're aquatic sorcerer, treated as having a better charisma, aquatic cleric, treated as having a little bit better level. Now, for alternate racial traits, they have quite a great variety of them. 
Some of them are breath weapons, which there are two types. And would ooze breath weapon if an ooze method was in your ancestry, or perhaps an acid breath weapon. Some of them are amphibious, meaning that they can breathe water just as air. That's a pretty good advantage. Some of them have special dark vision, deep sight. This means it's a much farther dark vision, but only functions underwater. Some gain fast healing when in the water, dipping themselves into it. Some look almost human, have skin which can disguise themselves in various environments. Either they can change their skin coloration just a little bit to hide in more of a society, or they can change in such a way that hides them in a natural environment. Some gain special abilities as if they're connected to Nereids or Tritons, other water affinity creatures, and some gain a blind sense when within the water, kind of like a, a shark's blind sense. Now, as for favorite class bonuses, there are some interesting ones, but the one I wanted to mention today is the wizard one. Effectively, they are able to add spells with the water descriptor from cleric, druid, or wizard to their spell book. For a favored class bonus. It has to be one level lower than their current highest level. But this means that they can actually get some cleric and druid spells into their wizard spell book. This makes them a very interesting wizard getting this extra dynamic of water-based spells. Now there are two racial archetypes I want to mention for Undine today. First off is a bard archetype, Water Singer. Water Singer is very cool because if you understand what Water Singer is, an easy way of saying this is it's your waterbender. If you don't know what that is, you do not know Avatar, the last airbender, you're a waterbender with Water Singer. Effectively, what you can do though, to explain it to those that might not know it, you can create cubes of water that you can use to block things or to fill up spaces, to flank with people. You can attack using said cubes of water. And the higher level you get, the more cubes, the more attacks you can get. And you also can then eventually use water to heal people. Very cool abilities that replace some of your other performances. Now the other one is the Undine Adept. Effectively, this is a druid archetype which dives deep into your Undine ancestry. For one thing, you get the ability to be amphibious using this. So maybe you didn't want the alternate racial trait, you get amphibious here. You can wa wild shape into aquatic creatures. These are of a little higher level than your non-water creatures. You're a little better at it. You get bonuses to summoning. You get some abilities to commune with the spirits. And you resist the abilities of water-based creatures rather than your normal phase nature-based creatures. Kind of an interesting combination of abilities. Now for feats, Undine get a couple interesting ones. Of course, they get the ethereal jaunt ability, all the elementals do. But they get a couple of things like the ability to turn all their fire spells to steam so you could use them underwater. Some bonuses to your hydraulic push, enhancing it. And of course, and of course, just like the alternate racial trait, there's a feat which gives you amphibious. This one gives you some other bonuses though, so there's a lot of options to becoming amphibious as an Undine. Just as I said before, if you're looking for racial traits, the actual trait, like the optional rule traits, always check out the list. There's always a bunch of them for all the races that I've been talking about for now. Anyway, that's it for today. So I introduce you to the Undine, a emotional but controlled race who, unlike all the other elementals, forms their own societies and builds themselves as their own race. A very unique thing. Very interesting when you compare it to the other three elemental races, who are very individual, very rarely even meeting each other, let alone creating a society. But water has. It makes them both unique and an interesting perspective to play in in comparison. The others are always fun to play, but this drives you into a different perspective when you're building your characters, because you have racial connectivity and community behind you, which the others don't. A unique experience, which I think is very fun to play and to check out. But anyway, I hope you're having a great day. If you have any Undine characters you've played in the past you want to talk to me about, let me know about. I love to hear your stories about games that you've been in or played in or even run. And remember to check out my links below for things like Discord, Twitch, Twitter, and of course my Patreon. But anyway, until the next time, I bid you farewell.